wind of hatred is blowing through North America, and by 1755, Acadia is in the eye of the storm. Ten years earlier, Louisbourg had become such a threat to Boston that the governor of Massachusetts, William Shirley, with a colonial army, attacked and captured it. Three years later, Shirley is enraged to learn that Louisbourg will be given back to France. The Acadians become the target of his fury. The province of Nova Scotia will never be out of danger as long as the Acadians are tolerated there. If I had an army, I would lead it to Minas and Grand Pre. I would break the dikes again. I would lay waste the whole country. I would drown this brood of vipers. In 1749, the English built their own fortress, Halifax, on Shibukto Bay. A clash is inevitable. The New York Gazette's correspondent in Halifax writes that the Acadians must go. We are now upon a great and noble scheme of sending the neutral French out of this province who have always been secret enemies. If we affect their expulsion, it will be one of the greatest things that ever the English did in America. For by all accounts, that part of the country they possess is as good a land as any in the world. We could get some good English farmers in their room. A new governor, Charles Lawrence, demands that the Acadians swear a new oath, this time with no reservations. But the Acadians refuse to renounce the promise made 25 years earlier. Our fathers, having taken for themselves and on our behalf an oath of allegiance which has since been approved many times in the name of the king. We will never commit the inconsistency of swearing an oath which in any small way alters the conditions and privileges which have been granted to us in the past by our fathers and our sovereigns. Lawrence makes his decision. On August the 11th, 1755, he writes to Lieutenant Colonel John Winslow, commander of a Massachusetts unit at Grand Pre. You must collect the inhabitants together in order to their being transported in the best manner in your power, either by stratagem or force, as circumstances may require. But above all, I desire you would not pay the least attention to any remonstrance or memorial from any of the inhabitants. I therefore order all the inhabitants, both old men and young men, as well as all the lads of 10 years of age, to attend the church at Grand Pre on Friday the 5th instant at 3 of the clock in the afternoon. The duty I have now, though necessary, is very disagreeable to my nature and temper, as I know it must be grievous to you, who are of the same species as I am. Your lands and tenements, cattle of all kinds and livestock of all sorts are forfeited to the crown with all your other effects except your money and household goods. And you yourselves are to be removed from this province. No! There is no war! Acadia has been a British possession for 42 years. Almost all these people were born British subjects. Having your possession. Be quick about it. John Thomas, a doctor with Winslow's troops, kept a meticulous journal during the autumn of 1755. September 2nd. Pleasant day, Lieutenant John Indicott on shore with men to burn a village at a place called Katiaja. September 18th, very hard gale of wind, much rain and snow. Major Pribble returned with his party, having burned 200 houses and barns. In the summer of 1755, 12,000 Acadians of French origin live in Acadia. Hey! 
that year, 7,000 are expelled. The upheaval will last for five years. More than 10,000 Akkadians will be sent into exile. Began to embark the inhabitants, who went very sullenly and unwillingly. The women in great distress, carrying off their children in their arms. Others carrying their decrepit parents in their carts and in their goods, moving in great confusion and appear the scene of woe and distress. are deported to the American colonies, but they are not welcome there. Jean Labrador and his family of seven end up in Salem, Massachusetts. I was refused a team of oxen to fetch home the firewood that I had cut myself. We were left in the middle of winter without fire or victuals, in a house with no doors or roof. When it rains, we're obliged to move the bed from part of the wet leeward. When I told one of the selectmen that we were afloat in the house, he said that I should build a boat and sail it. A third of the Acadians who were deported will die of typhoid, smallpox, or yellow fever. One third more make their way to the French colony of Louisiana. The rest are scattered to France, the English colonies, and the Caribbean. When the deportation ends, only 165 French families remain in Acadia. And in 1756, the wind of war that blows over North America will become a hurricane. <laughs> 